Glory, America. Bonjour. Hi, Canada. Chew Hewitt in the ReliefFactor.com studio. It's a big week in American history. The hearings begin for Judge Amy Coney Barrett to assume the seat on the Supreme Court that I believe she will take before the election. And then we can debate whether or not the radical Democrats actually would ever try to pack the Supreme Court. Now, I have got a lot to say about that, especially the Orwellian attempt by Democrats to redefine what packing the Supreme Court means. That's very simple. It means adding seats to the Supreme Court. That's what FDR tried in 1937. At that time, there were only 96 members of the United States Senate. It was rejected 70 to 20. The president, by the way, had 76 members of that Senate on his side. Excuse me, 73 members of that Senate on his side. And he only got 20 votes because packing the Supreme Court is so radical. It's so off the chart. Now, you'll hear lefties say, well, the court has gone up and down in history. Yes, it began at six when it had nothing to do back in the days before Marbury versus Madison. You know, the government gets started in 1789. John Marshall becomes the chief justice at the end of the Adams administration, 12 years in. And soon thereafter, he begins building the court and its reputation via Marbury versus Madison in 1803. So from the beginning at six, it got up to 10 when Lincoln added one during the Civil War. Then that was allowed to lapse by the Reconstructionist radicals. And it stayed at nine from 1869. The stability, and, and then it began to develop a lot of case law. It had a few cases prior to 1869 that matter that I still teach every year when I teach con law like Baltimore v. Barron. Uh, the, the, the question before us is important but not very difficult. There are a few. Okay, McCullough versus Maryland. There, there are a few early cases that matter. But it really doesn't become the modern Supreme Court until the 14th Amendment is passed to bring freedom to the newly emancipated former slaves. The 13th Amendment bans slavery. The 14th and 15th Amendment protect emancipated men and women. And that's when the modern era begins. Doesn't mean we get it right. We still get things wrong. You'll hear about that in the next four days of hearings of Judge Amy Coney Barrett before Chairman Lindsey Graham and the rest of the Judiciary Committee. You'll hear a lot of con law. I'll be watching because This is what I live for. I I wait for this moment when the court gets a six-member center-right majority. None of them are radical conservatives. There aren't any radical conservatives out there. The president wouldn't nominate, nor would Republicans confirm, much less Democrats, a radical. And and I don't want a radical. I'm a center-right guy myself. I just want someone to apply the law and not to make it up. And the three liberals will do their job of trying to suggest ways, and maybe they'll persuade. Uh, Justice Kagan is very, very smart. So is Justice Breyer. Justice Sotomayor represents a uh, sort of, uh, sort of classic left-wing, soft left, not hard left, but soft left redistributionist worldview. But she's not radical. Stephen Breyer is very smart, a little bit old, and uh, and Justice Kagan is, you know, the, the great. She'll become the great dissenter. And I think the Chief Justice will guide this court to as many 7 2 8 1 9 0 decisions as possible. But expanding the court, that's just radical. In fact, Chief of Staff Mark Meadows yesterday went on Judge Janine and said, What happens if Joe Biden and the Senate Democrats? got a majority, and then packed the court number seven. Well, he's going to do all those and, and a lot more. I, I, honestly, the, the president is the one that's <laughs> challenging us to make sure that we have the, the schedule ready and ready to go. Uh, but, you know, it's interesting in your lead up, uh, Judge, you mentioned something. He's he's ready to make the contrast between Joe Biden on one, on one key thing. You're talking about packing the courts. What does that mean to the American people? It means that Joe Biden is going oh, yeah. to expand the court by three to five people, liberally. Liberals, and what will that do? It means your Second Amendment rights will be gone. It means your religious liberty will be gone. It means that they will give additional uh, support to illegals that are here all through the court since they can't do it through the American people in Congress. You know, that's exactly what they're going to try and do. 
They're going to try and do it through the American, you know, just bypass representative government, put hard left and uh, rewrite people on the court and just invent stuff. Now, the president went on Fox with Maria Bartiromo yesterday morning. I was over on Meet the Press yesterday, and very quickly, I always do this for the record. Here's my first comment when uh, Chuck comes to me on the panel. We had very short panels yesterday, so I got uh, a grand total of two minutes here. But cut number 27. It's going to make the difference. Uh, Hugh Hewitt, are we in October 1996 territory? Here's Ken Spain, a Republican strategist who told us on Friday, six months ago, Republicans were hoping that we would be talking about Senate races in Colorado, Arizona, and Maine. Instead, there's concern about the potential outcomes in states like South Carolina, Georgia, and Kansas. The point being is is about this time in October of 96, when the word went out, it's every Republican for themselves, don't worry about Bob Dole anymore. How close are Senate Republicans to that mindset? Uh, A week ago, they were very close to that, Chuck, but not. This has been a week of enormous relief. I've interviewed a dozen Republican senators, and the vice presidential debate really turned it around for a lot of Republicans, as did the president's sort of powerful energy on uh, conservative media getting back out there. They're not afraid he's going to be uh, out of the picture, generating base enthusiasm. I remember 96 when uh, Jack Kemp just got completely creamed by Al Gore in the vice Mm -hmm. presidential debate. Well, this time, Vice President Pence played direct to Pennsylvania on fracking, direct to Pennsylvania on the Supreme Court. So I think across the Senate map, I believe the president is down in double digits, but closing nationally. But across the Senate map, this was a very good week, and that's not even counting the Cal Cunningham collapse in North Carolina. So, you know, the, the fact is that I think the bottom was touched when he went on the helicopter to Walter Walter Reed. And now it's just a question of closing the gap across the United States. And I believe the Gallup poll yesterday showing 56% of Americans are better off today than they were four years ago is really what's going to drive turnout. And I do believe the president's base is absolutely on fire, excited. Uh, Chuck came back to me after uh, there had been a long discussion of uh, a variety of things, but he asked me about the Michigan terrorists and whether or not the president had been forceful enough in condemning them. Cut number 28. Chaos. Hugh Hewitt, um, the, the, the president's um, decision to go on the attack on Governor Whitmer and not denounce this terrorist threat against her, big political mistake by him? No, I don't think so. I think they're terrorists, and I think we've got to be very clear that they don't define political speech in Michigan any more than the people who assault police define the people seeking police reform. They're terrorists. They're McVeigh-level dangerous terrorists. And I'm glad the FBI did their job, but it ought not to uh, put off limits any criticism of the governor's approach to the virus or any praise of the governor's approach to the virus. I think the president's going to play hard, hard, energetic, uh, political, mainstream tactics from here until the end. I think he's going to seize on the Supreme Court. I think he's going to seize on court packing, not being answered. I wrote about it in the Post this morning, but I don't think he has to respond to every allegation from everyone in every situation. That, that's the case. The president doesn't have to sit there, and if, if Whitmer says X, he doesn't have to say not X. He needs to do what he wants to do where he wants to do it on his schedule for 23 days. 23 days to the election. But early voting is underway in Arizona and in Ohio and in other places. So go to KeepAmericaAmerica.com. KeepAmericaAmerica.com is an operation of the Job Creators Network. Proud to sponsor uh, their Approach to you over the airwaves. Proud to have them here sponsoring the show and proud to have them talking to you about where to go to vote. KeepAmericaAmerica.com. Go there. Find out where to vote. Find out when early voting starts in your state. Commit to take at least one person with you to the polls. All right? At least one person. Do a little, do a lot, but do something. Turnout is everything in this election. KeepAmericaAmerica.com is the place to find out where and when you can vote. Go and vote early if you can. Find out the details at keepamericaamerica.com. 350,000 people have already done that. You'd be 350,001. I'll be right back on The Hugh Hewitt Show.